Welcome to Great House Fun House 31 Days of Horror. Tonight's spooky pick, The New York Ripper. I wanted to reserve one spot in my first 31 Days of Horror challenge for something really violent, scuzzy, and Italian. I don't think I could have done any better than Lucio Fucci's The New York Ripper. It's a simple enough premise for an exploitation movie. A burnt-out New York police detective teams up with a psychoanalyst to track down a vicious serial killer, randomly stalking and killing various young women around the city. So where to start? How about on a dog finding a dead woman's hand in the bushes? Freeze frame on it as the opening credits roll. It's probably the first and last time that happened in the whole history of cinema. Which leads us to the gruff, burnt-out lieutenant on the case played by Jack Headley. We find out from an interview he's conducting with the nosy landlady of the victim that the girl had a phone conversation with a man, arranging a meet and said man at a weird duck-like voice. Strangest voice I ever heard. Sort of like a duck. Like a duck. Quack, quack, quack. We see the handiwork of the killer in his second kill. A cyclist riding a ferry leaves a message inside a car from an earlier encounter she had with the driver. The killer, who's been following her the whole time, seizes the opportunity to knife her to death. He's definitely not messing around. Lucio Fulci loves to make an Hitchcock out of himself, showing up in his own movies. Here he plays the chief of police, telling the lieutenant to shut the F up about the potential serial killer on the loose as to not cause a panic. We then follow the cop as he goes to the beautiful Columbia University campus to meet with a psychoanalyst to help him with the case. Apparently he's a psychic too because he knew what the lieutenant was there for. It's about that maniac who loves to slash young girls to death, right? How did you guess that? I eat oodles of carrots. To up the sleaze factor, we follow a bored rich doctor's wife who gets her kicks at live sex shows by recording the audio of it while she flicks her bean. That's where we meet our potential killer, the Eight Finger Greek. He's missing two fingers, you see. Is he the killer? I do wonder. Once the sex show is over, the female performer returns backstage, where it's baited beautifully in red and green lights, reminding us we're watching a giallo. The killer strikes again as she gets violently murdered as he shoves a broken bottle up her cooch. That is brutal. Cut to bored doctor's wife again, where she goes to a pool hall and gets molested by a big toe. She seems to like it at first, not a big fan towards the end. That is probably the most disgusting thing in the movie. A vile looking man playing footsie with that woman's genitals is probably the unsexiest thing I've ever seen. The final contestant we follow on this game show you would never want to be on is a young blonde demure woman who the eight finger Greek spots on an empty subway car. He tries to get at her, she runs away, then ends up in an empty movie theater and gets sliced up by a young handsome fella and wakes up from it in a hospital bed. She dreamt that that young handsome fella that did the slashing was her boyfriend. As she tells him this, as he visits her. But that's crazy, right? That couldn't be. And that's as much as I'll reveal about the movie. There are good things going for the New York Ripper. It is beautifully shot for one. We do get the uncompromising greediness of early 80s New York City. On a personal note, I'm a 42nd Street loving freak. So when filmmakers of that time would include shots of those theater marquees, you've already won me over. There are a few scenes where there's genuine suspense, like when the bored doctor's wife picks up the eight-finger Greek for a light BDSM night. Once they're done, as he's sleeping next to her, she finds out on the radio that he might be the New York Ripper. The build-up to her escape is uh, genuinely suspenseful. If you're here for the gore, you're in for a treat. It's very well done. The craft of it is so well done that you'll still look away watching some of it even today. Like a fine wine, the disgustingness of it aged really well. The scene with a razor blade that meets an eye. Oof, just no 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 no. The violence perpetrated against women here is unflinchingly brutal, unpleasant, and ugly. That is to be expected from a movie titled The New York Ripper. Lucio Fulci certainly delivers on exactly what this movie is supposed to be. The acting and dialogue are on par with dub Italian movies of that time. I just take it easy and get some love and understanding. <laughs> You're pig-headed. The killer's reason for going on this murderous rampage is flimsy at best. Doing all of it while speaking with a duck voice is definitely odd, but certainly creative in a way. Who the hell are you?
Although this identifies as a giallo, I would say this is more of a slasher in the stricter sense. This is exploitation at its sleaziest. When you think about Great House movies, The New York Ripper is a prime example. Just that title alone, you know exactly what you're gonna get. I enjoyed the greediness of it all, it definitely kept me engaged throughout. Just know what you get yourself into before pressing play on The New York Ripper. Links to streaming or purchasing The New York Ripper are available in the description below. Let me know your thoughts on The New York Ripper and come back tomorrow for another 31 days of horror spooky pick. Oh, my boy.